Hello, everyone. Welcome to this ArtStation live stream on how to create a winning student portfolio. My name is Stephanie, and I'm joined here by some very special guests. Um, I'll introduce them shortly, but yeah, if you're a student and uh, you want to have advice on how to create a really good portfolio, how to organize uh, your work and, you know, really see what stands out to recruiters, we have Cami and Alejandro who are recruiters and we also have a Wyatt who is a producer at Epic Games. Um, Cami, Alejandro, Wyatt, uh, I'm going to let each of you introduce yourselves a little bit uh, to get started. Uh, Cami, how about we start with you? Do you want to just share a bit about what you do? Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. What an honor to be part of an art station uh, panel. Um, I'm a recruiter, full time, full cycle recruiter at GG Locators. We only recruit for game studios, some XR companies, some esports, um, and recently a lot of um, blockchain crypto companies that are starting up. Um, I used to work at Full Sail University and, um, you know, helping grads get jobs in the industry, coaching them with resumes, portfolios, <laughs> and things like that. Anyway, um, awesome. I'll pass it, yeah, I'll pass it to Alejandro. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Alejandro Rodriguez, and I'm a recruiter supporting Probably Monsters and the plethora of studios within. Um, I come from a history of uh, 343, ArenaNet, and WB, and other studios, and I'm mostly focused on creative and art, and I'm super excited to be here, and it's once a super honor to be here as well. Awesome. Thank you, Alejandro. Wyatt, if you want to share a few words about yourself. Hey, I'm Wyatt. Uh, I am not a recruiter, but uh, I do interview a lot of people. I am a producer at Epic Games. Uh, I currently work in the advanced projects. Um, I do uh, multi-platform things across all the company, the whole of the company, uh, being advertising for promotional or Fortnite, um, a lot of industry work. Uh, I do review a lot of portfolios. We get a lot of resumes, and uh, it, it, I do a lot of the uh, studio uh, university recruitment with a couple of the people here. Awesome. Thank you, Wyatt. Thank you, Kami. Thank you, Alejandro. So glad to have you with me uh, helping to answer um, questions. So how it's going to work is I've collected a bunch of questions that I've received that have come up numerous times uh, every time I've done portfolio reviews. So I like to first start with addressing those. And then I'd like everybody on the chat to ask your questions. So if you have any questions about uh, portfolio, career advice, drop in, drop them in the chat, and uh, we'll do our best to answer as many as possible uh, during the hour. So uh, one of my first questions that I think comes up a lot um, is for even before you're starting, you know, your portfolio is trying to understand what's in demand as a, in terms of entry level job. What are studios looking for? Are they looking for generalists? Are they looking for artists to fill in some very specialized positions? Um, so what what have you uh, folks observed? Uh, Alejandro, do you want to share some of your observations? Absolutely. And so the the main applications we ever received are what we're really looking for specialized. Uh, it's been a while, and from my perspective, from three for three or, or Polly Monsters or Arena, that have looked for uh, generalists. Generalists, that's awesome. And how about Wyatt? You, since you've also been working for so long in VFX, is that the same case? I mean, for, for me, I, I came from 15 years in VFX working in New York. Uh, so it's in New York, the it seems in the, in the States, at least, the East Coast is very generalist focused. So a lot of the people we would want uh, working in Manhattan, of course, in New York was we'd want a generalist that can do everything. Where I found working at that time, West Coast was much more specialized. That's kind of gone away now with a lot of the pandemic and remote work. But uh, at Epic, I deal mostly with, like with line production. So I'm always looking for artists, which are mostly just like surface artists, modelers, environmental artists. Those are the ones that are like, as for the art field would go, those are the big ones that are in demand. Like definitely environmental art uh, is, is definitely been coming up more and more. Interesting. And how about you, Cami? Do you, have you had any? Yeah, well, most of our clients are um, look, look to us to hire senior level um, candidates, um, but, Definitely environment. Um, if I can start a new a school that just teaches VFX, I, that that would be great because VFX trained with Unreal, um, you know, is a really special uh, uh, quality. And so I'm hoping that 
that and animation, I think, are probably what we see the most. Okay, very interesting. That's good to know. I hope this helps uh, a lot of the artists uh, in the chat. Um, so for an entry level position, do we know what the general expectations are? Because I know sometimes when you know a, a studio puts in a, a job and they have like, oh, we're like looking for three years of experience. Uh, does three years of experience often count as the experience you've gained during your studies? Or what are studios looking for? Uh, Wyatt, would you, do you know, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say like for entry level positions, uh, the time you spent studying usually doesn't attribute to uh, industry experience. Basically, if they're saying, hey, you know, we want three years of industry experience, it's you've worked somewhere for those three years. I mean, that doesn't say that if your portfolio isn't amazing and the skill set you have at school, you know, I wouldn't, you know, you could always apply for it if, you're, if your portfolio is strong enough. But I think when it comes to like, you know, if they're looking for three to five years, they're looking for that experience, they're looking for that to be like in a work role. And that also has attributes to, it's not just the work you're doing, but also if you've worked three to five years in the industry, that means you know how to work with a team, you know how the like a, a basic flow of like a larger or even a boutique size company will work. But it, it, that's another thing people are looking for as well. Like, how do you work with a team? So that's that's another aspect of it. But entry level would be entry level as like you've worked somewhere or done some experience, have some experience. Well, Camille or Alejandro, do you have anything to add to that? I, I do actually. Um, knowing the pipeline is pretty critical. So and that's right there working with a team. I would be getting experience anywhere I could, whether it's um, doing the challenges, doing the contest, doing game game jams, all those things help build your um, skill level and get you out there. Um, working with any indie studio you can find that needs help, um, all that is you know, it just shows how dedicated and passionate you are. And sometimes that'll help open a door for you. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. Um, really, you want to post one to uh, Cami and Wyatt, honestly. Uh, it's really about being able to build that ability to work with other teams, to be able to problem solve with teams. Uh, more directly, really, it will be about, as you as an artist, we're hoping to see someone that is able to, like, visibly understand fundamentals, have an understanding of visual design, have an understanding of visual storytelling, and also really able to carry concept reference into 3D game ready art. Right. Yeah, I think that brings me to one of the questions I also had in uh, my list of what does a recruiter, a hiring manager look for in a portfolio? So, for example, let's say, you know, you're a recruiter, uh, you know, you have like you put in a job ad and somebody sends in their art station portfolio. What are some of little things that you would be looking for in that portfolio to see if they would be the right fit? Well, we do. Um, first, we would really listen and talk to the hiring manager in the studio so we can really fine tune or close the aperture on what they're looking for. Um, and then when we're looking at the portfolios, as we talk to people, how does their um, portfolio kind of align with the type of game that that studio is building? Is, are there some similarities? I don't have the trained eye that Alejandro and Wyatt have for sure, but you can get an idea if um, some of the small details are, um, are focused enough. Tammy, you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Wyatt, do you have something? Cause I, well, I know I, you I, also I, have I, an art station portfolio. I think, I think... <laughs> I think Alejandro could go next. Oh, he, okay, he has sure, some, sure. Some Alejandro, input, so. go right ahead. Why not? Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> well, so, as a recruiter, also working hiring managers, one of the first things we ask ourselves is uh, really kind of, kind of like to double down this idea: Can this person carry the spirit and story of a concept into three D work, especially to three D artists? Uh, we always ask ourselves: How much ramp up would this person need in order to be able to meet the visual needs of the studio uh, and the development pipeline? Right. And then that's really like a, a metric how we use, okay, how much can we invest in someone? And do we also have the time to invest in that person? Uh, I definitely am worth saying. Um, um, our studios, uh, personally, I do not do really do our tests. And so really it's absolutely necessary for us to be able to see the technical ability in, the, in their portfolio and also their ability to visually start tell in order for them to like really be considered. Uh, personality wise, um, we look for their problem solving problem solving ability, but also their people first uh, attitude. Like we really look for people that are able to like learn, are able to 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 uplift the people around them. Because uh, really, 
the industry has its ups and downs and, and their ability to see beyond those problems and be able to turn those opportunities into like uh, new situations that unite, guide and empower those around them is, is like super golden and key to making good teams. Yeah, and, and for me, I mean, I'm, I'm coming from after, you know, I, I get it from the recruiter afterwards. So that all that legwork has been done, which is then filtered to us. But we, we have really good relationship with our recruiters because, you know, we want to make sure that they're looking for the stuff that we need. And exactly like you're saying, like you want to align that and close that aperture to make sure that you are trying to reach those people. But like for me, when I look at a portfolio, it's like I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, process in portfolios. Like I like to see like the napkin sketch. I like to see what your initial thought was and how if it's not directed from someone else, if it's just coming from like your idea, can you follow through on like that? Like, can I see that napkin sketch and then be like, OK, I see the process of how that's done. That's one of the things I always love. And I'm a big fan of like very organized portfolios. Like it's sometimes like you get like a lot of stuff all thrown out there. But like if you take a few minutes and you figure out like, OK, I'm going to put these images here and these flow into this one, like kind of that that that's going to help it when it also shows like, you know, does this person have like, you know, a, a, uh, a way to curate their own work and be able to work through that? Uh, and then lastly, like after we get that, there is the big part of, you know, you know, looking at that work, does it fit the style of the job we're actually doing? Like, for instance, uh, if you are working on Fortnite, yes, you should have definitely stuff in your portfolio that is Fortnite centric, but don't limit it to that. Like if you do have other amazing work, it will show me more like your knowledge, your skill set, plus also show me like, do you have an eye? Like you'll hear the word the eye a lot uh, when it talks about this, because you should be able, you know, people should be able to look at stuff and be able to instantly get that sense of like, okay, I get it. I get the structure. I get the composition. They understand lighting. They understand color. Like these are all things that will jump out right away. So. Yeah. Why that actually brings me to another question that just came up as you were talking is uh, I have heard a lot from other recruiters that students should cater their portfolio to the types of, to the a studio that they want to work for. But how about if there's a multiple studios that, you know, they want to try their luck at and see, you know, who, especially as a student, you might not know if you're ready for a certain type of company. So to not have your portfolio go too crazy, I guess, what would make the most sense? Should they stay maybe true to their own style or should they really try to push towards I mean, it, to me, I think that's a, that's like, if you have experience and you've worked and you have, you can then tailor your portfolio to work towards what you're applying for. Like, for instance, if you've been doing it for a while and like you, you try to emulate a style and you're like, OK, this company is looking for this position, then, yes, you should definitely do that. But if you're just coming out of school and you've only been working on school projects and you only have those things that you have for that that time, that's fine. It's just that you should then put position your portfolio in a place, a position of power where it's like the absolute best work, not the work that you feel that the people feel is better. It's what you feel is the work you have strived to make the best put that at the forefront and that could be like your opening. And then if, if it goes well, then that could always lead to an art test or that can always lead to you updating. Like, you know, you'll get a sense of like, Hey, we really like your style. We can see where it's going, but you really don't have anything that's saying that you could work in this style. That's great. You have that information, take that back and then rework it. If you want to work for that company, a lot of the times, you know, getting out of school, you want to get a job. Everybody wants to work. But like, if you have that one company you want to work for and they have a specific style, try to tailor it towards that because it will only help open the door a little bit more because you, they are going to understand you speak the same language. Right. Yeah. And, and here's something I always told our, my grads, find a job at a, you know, that you really identify with and you want, that's your, your, you know, your, what you're really working for. Read those, read all the words on there. I always say, cut it out, put it by the mirror and while you're brushing your teeth, really go through. Can I do that? And can it apply to what that studio is doing? So if you have a dream studio, go down a job description and it may take a year till you master all those requirements, but at least you um, have a map maybe of how to navigate through this crazy industry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I guess this next, my next question is more for maybe Cami and Alejandro is, are there some things that would make you like reject a portfolio right away. Let's say the art is good. Let's say you have two two students, like two entry level portfolios. Skill level is around the same. Let's say, is there anything that would maybe make you reject, pick one over the other? Have you, if they're both skill levels the same, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Um, mostly visual execution and how they handle subject matter. 
and how tastefully they do so as well. Um, yeah, technical experience, technical ability is something that we hope that you achieve and everybody will achieve eventually, right? Like, can you render a 3D character model to a to like a in a stylized way, you know, in, in a good in a good way, right? Or in a, in a AAA quality way, right? But how you're able to uh, visually execute and visually tell a story upon that is really a key thing that we look for. And, and I'm always looking at the soft skills. Um, you know, I'm talking to these people and and if I can get an idea um, if they're a poss what a culture fit they might be to the people I'm working, you know, my clients, you know, I kind of know all my studios, so I know what their what their vibe is like. So um, yeah, the culture fit showing that you're really on it with game jams or or contests and and really you could show that your passion and you're working. Uh, very dedicatedly to um, to join a team. It's about teamwork and relationships and all that other art stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. And so one thing I personally have always wondered is with online portfolios, you know, it's also your online presence. So, but you also want to stay professional. So does that impact recruiters? Because obviously some I guess some artists, you know, they might not be so professional sometimes, or they might use it more as a way to gain followers. Does, does that impact your judgment on an artist or not really? Because now you understand that online portfolios are what they are. Hmm. No, it's not really. It's a really good question. Um, not, not to that degree, right? We definitely want to yeah. make sure that people that join us are able to, um, uh, carry out a, a respectful, inclusive, and just overall professional work environment. That's really what we what we really scream for overall. And that, that will really be done in a conversation with them uh, primarily. Great. Why for you, does it matter or not so much? Oh, I think you're muted. I'm going to be bad at that. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I, I mean, there's always a sense of taste. And then like, you know, there should be, there is a level of professionalism. And I mean, if it's something that like, if you're questionable about what the art is and stuff like that, you know, you shouldn't have to censor it, but like there is ways talking about it to make sure that it comes out and you can showcase it. I mean, it's just, it's all just how you, how you want to handle it. So, I mean, at, at the end of the day, like the art is art and it's going to be, you know, but most of the time when people are applying, they are, you know, they, they know what they're applying for. They're putting forward that artwork to showcase, you know, that part of it. So. Great. So before, this panel, I went on ArtStation and I was looking and I browsed through a whole bunch of like student portfolios. And I found two, which I think really reflects what has been discussed here. So I'm going to briefly share my screen and hopefully I won't end the live stream doing so. But uh, I wanted to share this with the audience just to give a uh, visual examples of all the things that were addressed right now. So I am going to try this. Please bear with me. Share screen. Uh, all right, so the first one is actually Adam Denker share. All right, everybody sees my screen. I know everybody always asks that. Um, all good. Uh, so one thing that I really liked about Adam is that he was very organized. It was really easy to see that he was an environment artist and his work is very organized. Uh, as you can see here, he has his entire breakdowns, which are really nice. Uh, Adam is expected to graduate next year and uh, he's very professional, very organized in how he displays uh, his portfolio. There aren't too many artworks, uh, but it's clear and concise. Uh, he also has a great whoops, about description here. Um, basically with his resume portfolio, how to contact him, his social media networks, what he's interested in his skills and software, as well as uh, some projects that he worked on during his studies. So very much a hard worker. And I think it really demonstrates uh, passion, organization, and uh, tells a lot about, uh, about him and what kind of uh, employee he might be if he works at uh, the studio. Uh, the other portfolio I wanted to show. Um, does everybody see Katrina? Uh, Katrina is actually a student. Uh, she, well, she's a graduate from Champlain College. And now she works at Epic Games, actually, and also really uh, organized portfolio. 
Uh, she participated uh, in challenges, as you can see here. So she's definitely a hard worker. Uh, she has also a store where she created a tutorial and also a very um, organized portfolio. Uh, Cami, Alejandro, White, would you have anything to say about these portfolios? Otherwise, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. I don't think we got uh, we got uh, the other portfolio. I could just see Adam still. Yeah, oh, Katrina. No. Katrina. You cannot see Katrina's? Nope. Ah, one second. Let me try something. Sorry about that, guys. No. Uh, stop sharing. Sorry about that. I'm not that technical when it comes to, uh, I, I'm going to share my screen again. While we wait, I'll just continue to like be in awe of this amazing gun, Gundam collection. With, like, <laughs> it's like some sweet like space rings and like iron giant back there. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, this is, this is basically my childhood now is like, you know, I spend my adult money on my childhood stuff. So I would love to see that. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just going to share my screen so you can all see Katrina's portfolio. Sorry about the, the mix up. Yeah, so there this is Katrina. Katrina, yes, just to repeat a little bit, uh, she actually works at Epic Games right now, uh, but she is a Champlain College graduate. Uh, this is the portfolio that she applied with to work at Epic Games. So here, as you can see, she's a 3D character artist, and you know she has all her artworks here. Uh, when she uploads um, her project, she made sure to include a breakdown of her work, different uh, views. So it tells you a lot about her project and her skill level. Uh, she also writes a little bit of a description here. Uh, if we go back, uh, yeah, so you see, she's very dedicated. She created a substance uh, designer tutorial, and she also has, a. she demonstrated that she worked in challenges so that it demonstrates uh, that she's able to follow a brief and uh, complete a project. So, yeah, uh, do, you, do you guys also have something to say about Katrina's portfolio? I definitely have things to say, but I definitely want to have the team uh, be able to say what they need to say <laughs> here. Um, I, I mean, for, for me, it's like, uh, the, the, like the first one, like Katrina's has like the four pieces here, which are great. It looks like she tried to like, she's going for character art. So she's going character design. So she has that in there. Um, I didn't see it in there, but like th the way she had listed it, like having the, the, the concept, the design, the different angles, the thing that I would look for usually, especially if I am working, you know, if you're working in games is like, does, um, does Katrina understand uh, topology, uh, low poly versus high poly? Cause that's always going to be an issue for performance. Uh, so including some, some of that in the, in, in it is sometimes good. Like showing like, Hey, this is my high resolution mess. This is what the low resolution came out. That, that would be the one thing. Uh, and I'd say on, on Adams, on the other one, his, his stuff is really good. Uh, it's really well done and laid out. But um, the one thing that catches me in a lot of portfolios is like the guitar. So the guitar to me set immediately my initial thoughts, that's a tutorial. Like that's where my mind imme immediately goes. And I don't know that for certain. But like seeing either original work or work that you've m moved further, like again, it shows like, yeah, he's done a great guitar. But like there's that violin one that people do and the lamp. I'm sure all of us who have wanted to do like a substance painter have done the old fashioned, you know, lamp. But uh, seeing the other work that he did, which looks more original, that's going to be a little bit more appealing to what, what I'm looking into. So, but again, he also has like, it's great. He has the, the polygon count and the number count of the verts. And so that's, that's pretty good. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks, Wyatt. Great. Uh, if nothing else, I'll stop sharing my skin, uh, my, my screen. Um, oh. I mean Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. Alejandro, if you, if you wanted to say something, yeah. Yeah, let me know uh, how deep you want me to go. But um, uh, thank you so much for sharing these two beforehand. Uh, honestly, these two artists are are, are excellent examples of, uh, of a portfolio to share and for people to look into and to see what, what they're doing well. Both Adam and Katrina have done really well. In particular, Katrina, I think they're Friends of Birds uh, piece. They set out they set out to do exactly what they wanted to do and they achieved it. Like they 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 that 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 transition from concept to 3D was just flawless. It was just so well done. I really want to commend Katrina for that. Uh, Adam in particular, the last piece in that night street, they were phenomenal at capturing the the mood and the atmosphere, right? Um, 
I mean, micro picking will be in like, you know, like working more on shapes, working more, making sure that the textures like come across well, but overall, like this, so these are things that we can see is that yes, they're growing and we want, and we say this person has the ability to be invested in, and we will be very excited to do so. Um, yeah, I can definitely click him and go and do but honestly, um, very good examples. And I hope um, people get to see these portfolios and get to see that this is something that we would say yes to, both of them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. I'm, I'm taking notes here. I hope everybody <laughs> in the audience is taking notes. Um, yeah, those are excellent uh, um, portfolios. And from my, I dial it back from what I like to see is how they get, these guys get so many portfolios to see. So making it, you know, concise, narrow and organized um, is it's only going to help you adding all your your work in there is just going to water it down. So um, really, the takeaway is how nice and clean and focused um, because these guys have a lot to go through. So make it easy for them. Exactly. Yeah, just clean, organized. We know what you, we know what we're getting right with these portfolios, which is great. Um, so we're about halfway through the mark. So I think now we can take uh, Q and A's from the audience. I see lots of questions, so but lots of great ones. So the first question we received from uh, the chat is, is it quality over, over quantity or the other way around for environment art pieces? In general, quality over quantity. I would rather see finished pieces, like a, and, and very small, like beautiful corner pieces finished than expansive environments that are like have have clear a clear clear tells that you not, weren't able to finish the problem there. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a a beautiful corner is an exact way to point it. Like, show me that one beautiful corner, and I will be able to understand you get it instead of like bombarding you with a ton of like half finished or you know somewhat finished. Yeah, exactly. And like like we so showed in the last two examples, they didn't, there weren't tons of pieces. You know, there were just a couple really good ones, and that's really what matters. Uh, our next question: Are there any differences in the portfolio requirements for concept art programs, schools versus entry level jobs? Oh, so Cami, I think this one might be a good one for you to answer. Uh, is there a difference between? what a portfolio you're using to apply for a school versus an entry level job one. Right. But I think the bottom line is just showing how passionate you are um, and how organized you are. No matter you're applying, of course, if you're applying for a school, um, you want to show your, your breadth of work that you've been doing. And um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, just one kind, but, showing that you're really active and you're really, you're not going to stop. I always say, don't stop, just keep making, just keep creating. So if that's, you know, if you can demonstrate that and how passionate you are, that usually helps when you're applying to um, some of our great schools. Yeah, absolutely. And I would assume like well, Alejandro Wyatt, you could probably add that obviously at, for an entry level job, the skill level will be much more different than what you would be applying for uh, a school, because obviously if for a school, you, I think I'm, get, I'm assuming I might be wrong that you're just trying to showcase that you have basic understanding and you're passionate, like Cami says, while for, you know, to go for a job, you want to show that you're a little bit job ready, right? I'm assuming so. Absolutely. Um, why am I not going to say anything? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, you, you, a school portfolio, like if you have talent and you, it shines through, it's going to shine through in that, and then you're going to mm -hmm. go for it. And then I can't, I can't, the word passion is a very big one for me because it is like this job or this type of work. Like if you are passionate behind it and it's, it's not, you know, if you love your job, you don't really work. I mean, that's what it's, you're, if you're going to be an artist and you're trying to do it, the passion that you have, you can showcase that people will understand like this person is really passionate they're going they're trying you know to push it forward and, and move it and you know when you're going to school for the first time or you're trying to get into the industry you might not have that passion behind you but you'll find it and that can shine through in like when you try to go for like a, you know a real you know your job after school 
a, a portfolio is a portfolio in the other day, right? Uh, whether you went to school or not, I yep. review the same. I review in the same way. Schools give you like amazing tools at um, being able to learn the fundamentals in a very direct way, being able to learn about how to how to be an, an, an artist, but at the same time, you can learn that on your own time. Absolutely. Oh, uh, that's the common one. I think we get often, how do we gain industry experience if all the companies are looking for that? Is there any way to get a job without experience, but with a good portfolio? I mean, I'll, I'll go with what Cami was saying. Like there are opportunities now that you did not have game jams or, you know, contests or things like that. And that might if your work is really good and you can show through your work that it's good, you can try to apply for that position. You might not get it because they are determined to get that three to five years because they are maybe looking for a senior thing. But game jams are always happening and like collaborations are always happening. And like that work, you know, you can polish it and show through. And, you know, it, it might show the people that are looking like, hey, this person has, you know, the talent. They have the pieces we're looking for. And, you know, OK, they don't have that experience. Granted, if they're looking for a senior position to someone to have that role, it's determined that that's going to be it. But maybe there's other positions that they can find for you from applying for that role. Definitely. Yeah, and I, I also um, suggest, you know, I, take, go to, you know, IGDA has mentorships. Try, you know, I know in Seattle, we have a great um, Seattle Indies mentorship track. Anywhere you can share and ask questions to the industry, say, here's here's my portfolio. What what you know, what do I need to be doing to raise my you know level of, of uh, quality to get into a studio like yours? And then with that feedback, first of all, write, you know, say thank you for them taking the time to give you that, but also work that out, keep working on that. Maybe go back to that person who gave you that uh, mentor, that feedback uh, originally and say, hey, I've been working on your suggestions. Um, can you, you know, what do you think now? What else do I need to be doing so I can, you know, look skilled enough to get into a studio like yours? Just keep asking that question everywhere you go, frankly. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's phenomenal. I super agree there. And honestly, as a, let's say this artist person reviewed, reviewed their the feedback and came back with it. That is exactly what we're hoping to see because art directors and pretty much team members want to see people that are able to work off feedback creatively and, and, and you know, responsive. And so awesome, awesome answer. Perfect. All right, next question. What advice do you have for someone but with a basic understanding of art fundamental, but lacks the skill necessary to make a decent portfolio? Hmm. It is a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Take your time. I don't know if you've ever seen that anime boot period, right? Take the time to learn about what you care about, what, what, you, what you're really passionate about, and over time, build that up. And you know, eventually, you'll, you'll start sparking, you know, create sparks as you put in, you put in your, your pencil to the, to the paper. Right. Yeah. And practice makes perfect, right? So just keep working at it. So, someone had once told me, or a friend of mine had mentioned that, like his art teacher told him, like everybody has like a hundred thousand bad drawings. You just have to work through all of those. Oh yeah, I don't know anybody who doesn't have at least one bad drawing. Like everybody, like I, I'm sure I have plenty. Uh, perfect. Uh, is realism the way, or does stylized still have a chance? Oh, uh, I think there's both, right? I mean. Uh, it, why it, it's, from it's all Fortnite, it's, it's so stylized. i mean F Fortnite stylized but unreal engine and our artists and some of the stuff we do it's super high poly like the the matrix city that we did there is always going to be a need you know you're always going to have certain games that will only they'll look amazing and they'll play amazing but they have a style and they'll live forever and they'll keep looking good and then that style if it's good it could be 10 15 years from now and there's still games out there right now that are running that are running that many years on a single stylized version and it's still playable because it appeals to everybody. Realism is going to have its place like for manufacturing. And, you know, if, if a car company wants to show off their car, they're going to want that car to look exactly like a real car. Like that's what they're going to want because people are going to buy that, but that's their, that's their choice to make it that way. Could they do it in a stylized fashion and still do it? Sure. But you'll always, there's, there's a balance between that. It shouldn't be a deterrent to anything. 
there are definitely people who strive or are better at realism and there are other people that you know are better at stylized you're always and it will always be the case yeah and i'll just say that from a personal taste when i play games i personally still enjoy seeing pixel arts so stylized is fine by me and i love realism as well it's it's just really a personal preference and i think both are still very popular and they both have their audiences um uh, oh do we have any is anybody here can speak on animation we have okay. an animation yeah okay great uh what do you think should be prioritized in a portfolio for animation applications uh i would say your animation no only kidding uh i mean like so the priority, like if we're hiring an animator, show me the best animation, show me you understand weight, timing, pacing, show me that you can tell a story with a rig. I don't need to see a skin. I don't need to see lighting. Show me that that rig, if I can see your rig moving and it feels correct, I'm going to know you're a good animator. So um, the other thing I will add to that too, is if you are working on a group project, because I do know a lot of these group projects are, make sure you're calling out that part like this. Even this final beautiful piece, I did this animation because that's going to help when a lot of times when we get reels or we're looking at stuff, it's a group project and there's a lot of pieces. And I'm looking, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I know how much time it takes to go to school. There's no way one person did this. Make sure you call that out because animation can sometimes get lost in that. But again, some of these characters that you see in these pieces, they're only looking good because they have good animation. So again, it, it doesn't need to be a finished piece. It could be cubes you know, the traditional, like show someone pushing a boulder, lifting a boulder, swinging an ax. These are all things that if you're looking for a very specific style of animation, you'll see it come through in just the rig alone. So Alejandro, Excellent I'm sure you have. Answer. Excellent <laughs> answer. Like, I don't have to add any follow anything upon that. I was just, for those who sync, that cover all the bases, the uh, animation fundamentals. That's all we're looking for as well. Yeah, and in regards to crediting our other artists on the team, I think it's also really important uh, on our station in your portfolio, there was a way to link to other artists' profiles. So you can say, oh, I worked on this, and this other artist helped me with the environment. So that way, um, you're very honest, and people really know what you did, which is great. All right. Uh, what are some ways you can cater your resume for the job you are applying to, such as an environment art job or a VFX job? Hmm. This is a, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward. I kind of touch the base upon what we had done before. Like look at the games of the studios that you want to look at and, and see what they're dealing with. For example, 343 has done a lot of organic stuff. They, you know, they, they do the organic stuff in the ring. Well, create or create environments that 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 deal with organics in that way right for example 343 used a lot of the pacific northwest as a reference right well create environments that will fit in that environment and like then the art director will see well I could, that that could fit in my game and they'll, they'll give you a call um i'm going to be more resume specific because that's where my head's usually at when you're doing your resume Make sure all your technical skills are right at the top. Make sure your live link to your portfolio and LinkedIn, it works, first of all. <laughs> Test it every time you apply. But those, yeah. should all, those should all be at the very top because people don't have time to read everything. You know, I'm sure Wyatt and Alejandro are getting, you know, a thousand resumes a, a day maybe. And so if you make it easy, make it really easy for them to see what's most important to them on your resume. I'll go one further because I'm a little removed from the recruiting part. I really don't usually look at the resume because to me, it's just send and shameless plug. Send me your art link, your, your link to ArtStation. And I will just look there because that's where, I love if you've worked other places, that's great. I know you could, you've worked at, you know, 343 of you worked and that's awesome. But to me, it's just like, send me a link of the art. I'll, I'll look at it and we'll, we'll, we'll work from there. But again, you know, it's, it's good to have a resume put together, of, but again, right at the top, make it as easy as possible. I don't review as many resumes, but I know that the amount that the, the recruiters at Epic have to go through, it's insanity. And you've got to have it like, just make sure it's right at the top and just cut right to it. So please. <laughs> Please. Yeah. And also like in the resume, you would want to show like what software, you know, right. And if that's yeah, sure. applicable to, uh, to uh, the environment or other, uh, our job you're applying for. All right. Next question. Uh, I'm just going to read it just to make sure I understand it. 
how can I tailor my prop work to give me a good chance with an environment artist application if possible? Um, I guess we would, one thing we could say is for props, the textures potentially, sure. yeah. Um, also, if it's going to affect the work is like the lighting is going to have to have like, even if it's just on a turntable, you want to make sure that the lighting looks correct, that it's it's hitting the materials correctly, that you're getting the right specular, you're writing the right diffuse, all that stuff is there. Um, and then again, for like gaming, I think it's really good to show like, yes, you can sculpt a 5 million polygon barrel, but can you make me, you know, a 1200 polygon barrel that looks just as good as your 5 million polygon? that will help you because it'll show that yes you can do the super high end but then if i needed that person to dig deep and start working on some of the assets that are going to go in then they can they can work through that as well that's very yeah. poignant coming from someone working on real definitely you your your engine's able no i'm serious your, your engine your engine's able to handle so much so many polys but you still need to be able to understand those shapes so well and be able to carry them through yep and it, i mean the other thing i'll say is your silhouette like if you go to reduce something down it's going to start looking jaggy and once it starts looking jaggy it's going to start looking low poly and then it's going to it's not going to work so you know pay attention to that silhouette add those curves where you need to you know make sure that that silhouette on a black and white image like a black image against a white background and oh my gosh look at all these edges how do i smooth i can dedicate some more geo there and just work through if those. you're writing notes that's one of them you want to write <laughs> you know i want to give a shout out to art station learning uh, section because there are so many excellent um, tutorials to take advantage of. So if you're out of school or you've got summer off or you just want to keep on um, stretching, those tutorials are amazing. Um, Art Station has done a great job providing the industry with that information. So Art Station tutorials. Actually, I like the Art Station blog because I get to, it gives me a real um, good understanding of the whole of lots of things going on on in the art world for games. So, thank you, Kami. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, so we only have about ten minutes. I'm going to see which questions to address, which could uh, be important. Uh, one of them is how important is personal branding this early in your career? If you're just uh, about ready to finish your studies and you're about to apply for a job, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Personal branding is who you are, right? It's how we perceive you, right? Um, it, make sure that it is professional. Make sure that it's respectful. That way, that people want, wouldn't like to invite you in and 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 have you be part of their team. Right, respectful, right at the top, ma'am. Your Twitter handle, whatever social media you're using, um, keep it keep it really respectful. And and then I'll just take the one side of like your personal brand, if you're going to go work for someone else, it's going to be hard to push that onto them. But mm. there, you know, it is something to be like, your style and the way you do stuff is going to be good. But if you are hired for a specific role in a specific position, just be prepared to like be able to, you know, do that as well. So I mean, it is important to have your own identity and the brand and I, I, I have my own do my, my own artwork and stuff. But you know, you want to make sure that you're part of that team and you're working, you know, you're working with them. So just keep that in mind. Definitely. Tammy, I might have one for you. Uh, any specifics on how to put on a, your resume, talk about a project that I worked for under an NDA? Yeah, those are always tricky. And, you know, if you're on, sometimes if you talk to the people who the, and you're working with, they'll give let you take some snapshots of some of that work and add that to um, a, maybe a portfolio with a password. Um, so you just have to, be really mindful of, of that NDA and talk to the company that you've signed that with. Everybody has that. This industry is one big NDA, I swear. I hear it every every call I get. So um, yeah, just, just ask the company that you're NDA'd with. Is that the way to say it? And then, um, you know, maybe you can at least do some screenshots and uh, that'll help open the door. I don't know, Alejandro or Wyatt, you have any other NDA magic? No, that's that's pretty much what you've said the the this the, exactly what we try to do as well so that's it, it's, it's it's hard it, it is hard because some stuff you just literally can never speak about so you got to figure out how to how to showcase that absolutely uh next question are 3d portfolios more needed in the industry now or are there still plenty of opportunities for 2d portfolios 
Mm. I mean, it depends on like, I don't know, like character concept art. I could still see that being drawn or, you know, everything you can draw everything. Like if you go got 2d knowledge and that's, if it's just, if you can draw it and you can make it look good and you can render it on paper, then it's just a step to get it to the engine or to the 3d package you're using. And then, you know, figure out the tools to make that the next step. So I don't think there's, you know, there are definitely pros and cons to both of it. If you're looking for a 3D modeler, obviously, you know, you're going to want to see that. But if you're looking for concept art, environmental artists, like stuff like that, then yes, of course, 2D is, is still going to be a, a, a viable option. Yeah. Those jobs are not going away. Definitely, yeah. it's about there. there is every studio's get, as long as your craft fits within the studio's needs and the pipeline, you'll be needed. Definitely. Ooh, here's a good one. Are internships just as competitive as entry level jobs? Yes, yeah. yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know that some schools, they have like co op programs and they have agreements with various studios. So if you're still, if you haven't applied yet to a school, it might be good when you're researching which school to go to to see if they have agreements with studios because that can help you get experience. But yeah, I, I've I was on LinkedIn and I saw internships go out within like 30 minutes, I think with like some of the AAA studios, so it goes by really fast. Uh, but but there are so many studios where you can still be getting experience. I mean, I think Seattle alone has over 200 studios here, really. Yep. And they're not all AAA and they're not, all, there's pixel art, there's everything. So whatever your passion is, I think if you go to game dev map, you can get a pretty good idea of what you know studios are in your area in the world and um, start reaching out and and seeing if you can build a relationship go to um you know here in seattle go to the the meetups and the igda meetups the seattle indies meetups i know every city has some sort of meetup and if they don't have a meetup start a meetup because there are game people in every city that need community and yes, so many of them are introverts. So if you can help open up that door, um, it really provides a great, um, you know, a great arena for that to nurture the game community in where you live. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna see what other questions we have. Uh, all right, we have a question from Anik. Is it harder to get hired from overseas than Europe or the US? I see a clear difference in spite of having a decent portfolio in case of many artists who are trying to break in. So if I understand correctly, this question is asking, is it harder to hire uh, from overseas or are, are like in this day and age, are people still focused on hiring local? Yeah, well, we have plenty of uh, clients that will only hire in certain states because of tax reasons. So, you know, they may only be, you know, they can't hire any, you know, engineers or anybody from Washington state. And I'm like, wow, this is where we all are. Right. Um, or they can't hire anybody um, except from, you know, I have one studio that really has three states that I can recruit from um, Ohio, Georgia, and Florida, I think. And, um, and, and that's just in, our country. So when we get a company that can hire um, outside of the US, it's it's exciting because I love recruiting from, you know, Australia or the, you know, the UK somewhere. Um, and we do have a few studios like that. But I don't know, I'd go to game dev map and start searching or art station jobs right there, right? You guys honestly have the best job board in town. Exactly. Yeah. And we do specify if there are remote positions or if there are uh, local. Uh, I have another, we could probably take just two more questions. Uh, one of them is if I start small props or drawing, does that count in a portfolio or should only best works be included? I'll always include the best work. Yeah. It, it's, you can, you can add that towards the end. It's fine if it's down at the bottom, but you want to always start your first image should be the one that you get people to look at. That's the, you know, that's the one that's going to stop people from scrolling. You know, how do you make this person stop scrolling that put the best work first? Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely your, the work that represents you, you're only as, as Horia once upon a time said, you're only as strong as your weakest piece. And so, and if you really want to have your old work put in a separate folder or in like a compilation, uh, like art piece, 
but only let me see the stuff that would let me say, yes, this person would want to get hired. All right, we could probably take one last question. And one last question is from, uh, I'm not sure if they're a student or a junior artist, but they're saying that they're feeling overwhelmed. What are some ways to get started, I guess, with your portfolio? I guess first we can say, see what you like, right? See what you're interested. Look for companies you might want to work for. Uh, and start from their research. I, I, I do this when I do the universities all the time. And I'll say, like, go to ArtStation, right? And I've been saying this before the, you know, everything happened. It's been every time we go, it's like, go to ArtStation, find the medium you're interested in, go to trending, see what that looks like. If your artwork is not as good as that, what can you do to work towards that? If your artwork is, then refine it and make sure that it's it it's this caliber because this tool is out there people are using it that's what they're going to look for when they're recruiting they're looking for the best they're looking for the unicorns they're looking for the people that can get it and i think if you're feeling overwhelmed step back find out what is your passion are you a modeler are you an, a texture artist are you an animator like and then refine it into that if you're a generalist and you can show all of that in one reel that's amazing do it put it towards that figure out those pieces but use art station use what is out there as like the top trending stuff. You don't have to do it like that style, but is the quality you're producing as good as that style? So I think that's that's one way to definitely get started. Absolutely, and just research, you know, it's like, there's no pressure. Take like uh, Alejandro previously said, you know, just take the time, explore, discover what you love to do, and then things should come naturally, you know, and you'll eventually find your path. And uh, that's usually a good way to go about it. All right, so we are at closing the hour. Can, can right I can now. I grab oh, one absolutely. one thing? Sorry. So there's sure. one question in here that says, you know, I, you know, how do I get started? And if that's like in the industry, and like let's say that works, take any like I started off as a runner in the U.S. They would be called a PA. I started this 18 years ago. I was the first employee for the USA because it was a company from England, and I was a runner. I basically, this was at the time when VHS tapes had to be run down the street to the editorial house. That's what I did. I worked, but because I was this person, I had access to the render farm at the time. 20 years ago, a render farm, you didn't have one of those. You didn't have cloud rendering. You just, I, and that's what I did. I worked with all the teams. I worked with the 2D team, the editorial team, the, the, the machine team that did the stuff to tape. I worked all these pieces. And then at night they were like, here, sit here if you want and work on this and i did and i think that's what you can do find a local shop or an indie shop find someone that's doing it you know you know my old man would say like oh go to the mechanic shop and sweep the floor i mean it's the same thing if you can start groundwork you know see how you can do it see if it fits in you'll learn from all those people and you know starting at the bottom of things is great because you get exposed to everything you can see everything from a much wider view instead of that narrow like this is my job kind of thing so I th that was just one I wanted to hit on. So, Bravo. <laughs> Great. Wyatt, Alejandro, Cami, thank you so much for joining me today in this panel. Um, I think we addressed most of the questions, but if there are still some, uh, we're still having like an open house on our station. So head over to our station blogs. Uh, I believe we have the links in the chat and we still have a couple of schools who are going to be answering your questions throughout the day. So if you want to send them your portfolio or have questions about what kind of training they offer, the, the various programs, uh, they're around uh, throughout the day and they'll be able to answer your questions if we weren't able to answer your questions uh, during the live stream. I also have my own art station. So like feel oh, free to reach true. out. I know there were so many people asking questions. There were there are very important questions too. And so like feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions too on my end. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Maybe what we can do after this chat is then we'll put the link to your portfolio and we'll include it in uh, the description of uh, the live stream so that people can uh, know where to find you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me and all the awesome questions. So, and it was great meeting you. So, yeah, thank you, Stephanie, and for all you do to keep the industry yeah. and the, the next gen going around the getting involved and whatnot. So, single handedly making this industry better. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, no, I have it. This, we have a huge team helping us out. But thank you so much. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.